Hey, what's up, Low Voltage Nation? This is Blake, and we have a super fun and exciting episode of the Low Voltage Nation podcast with Mason Bortz in person here in Nashville. He was here for a security conference. He is the owner of BIT Inc. They're an integration company out of Elkhart, Indiana, doing really amazing work. Go check those guys out. Uh, but before you go, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that notification bell, and if you want to join our exclusive low voltage nation group go to join.lowvoltagenation.com we've got security integrators structure cabling fiber copper we've got a really awesome community there and if you want to join the facebook group that's a free group it's like the wild wild west almost twenty thousand active members there go check that out too but join.lowvoltagenation.com all right let's get into the podcast thank you we're back we're back we're back how long has it been mason too long, Blake. It's been too long, but we have a new name for the podcast. It's yep. called Two Dudes and, and a, a Pack, pack Out. <laughs> so what we're gonna what we're gonna that's actually not the name of it, but for this particular podcast, it yeah. is. So what I want you to do, Mason, to kick it off is to open this and then pull out an item. All right, so describe what you're holding here for the audio listeners. I am holding a Milwaukee pouch. Yeah, and then so what is the significance of the Milwaukee pouch in terms of uh, you using it? Because I know that your your technicians use yeah. it at BIT. So we we uh, we standardized on the Milwaukee has a place for electrical tape, Velcro. Um, then it, it pretty much holds everything uh, fairly nicely. Yeah, um, I like the low like the slender profile. Yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it doesn't kind of like get caught on stuff too easily. So that's really nice. The belt clip is is good oh yeah because i used to have the husky mm-hmm. belt the uh, belt clip and it wears out because it's velcro yeah this one doesn't wear out no have you had to purchase more for your no tech- the big thing that, that rips is the is the rivet i got you and this isn't a sponsored podcast this is just like you legit use these yes and what we want to talk about is like the importance of getting your technicians mm-hmm uh, the tools they need, especially a tool pouch. But you have how many technicians at BIT? So we have four, and <clears throat> we do tool audits every – we do them once a month. That's just to make sure that everyone has the tools that they need to complete the job effectively. Because okay. a lot of techs, they don't – we've noticed at least that when you, you hire someone on and they break a tool, they don't usually like to admit it and because okay. uh, they think they're going to get in trouble. Yeah, and yeah. so we – we do an audit every month, and if they break a tool, they they get a new tool. And it, because at the end of the day, if they if they're not running as efficiently as possible, that costs us more money. Yeah. Versus, you know, twenty dollar drill bit isn't that bad. So. Yeah. So right off the bat, what do you provide your technicians? What's like a essential tools? So we provide them the the Nipex, I think is what how it's pronounced. Knipex. I actually saw them at Nika Nashville, the conference, okay. and I specifically asked them. How to pronounce it? Knipix. I think so. Yeah, Knipix. I thought the K was silent. Knipix. I got the guy on video saying. All right. Uh, anyway, go ahead. So, anyways, we use Knipix apparently. Uh, uh, snips, and then um, the like pouch. they're similar to these. The, these are the Jonard ones. Yeah, they're very very similar to these, right? But, yeah, very but, similar. These are for Kevlar, though. We're doing really like fiber. Yeah. Huh. So I wonder if the, the ones like the Knipix ones, like you guys have been using, are just mm-hmm. for Kevlar. But they, like everybody seems to like them, though. Yeah, I, okay. we we like them. We were using the um, the Southwire for a little bit, but then they dulled really really fast. Oh, the ones the spring loaded ones. Yeah, yeah. They do dull fast, but I love the spring load action. See, I and hate the spring load action. Really? Yeah. Uh, do you think it's like kind of like crutches? It's just like you to be a real man, you need the. The Klein tools. Well, ones. I, I like those because they're light and they're yeah. small. But the um, yeah, here, hold on. I got these guys right here. Yeah, yeah, those. Yeah, this is what I learned on, and See, I just loved it. And I, and Jeremy liked them a lot too. Yeah, which is my, one of my employees. And I don't know. I never really liked them because they would get stuck. Like that, that locking piece yeah. would get stuck. Like you would cut something and then they would lock on you, and then you couldn't open them back up. So I was never a fan. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I like the Klein tools, but the issue with the Klein tools is they would get loose over time, and so you'd have to tighten it with a screwdriver, which you wouldn't think would be a big deal, but it's just like one of those annoyances. Yeah. And so I've always – I've been a fan now of the Knipix. 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 Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. not a sponsor either, but they might be soon. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what else? Um, 
We use that. Uh, Klein makes a really good 16 foot uh, tape measure. We mm, use that. Okay. We use. I think they have an eleven and one. They have like a, a standard, uh, like eleven and one, and then we have one that has like the security Torx bit for cameras and. Um, is it is it this one? No, it's similar to that, um, yeah. where you have all the bits, but it's all built in the screwdriver. It doesn't have that many bits. The does, thing it, is, does it break easily? Because I've heard people complain on TikTok about. I'm, I'm not sure if it's that one, the security bit one. Maybe it's the like the eleven and one tweaker. Uh, so we haven't really, we've had a couple of them, the smaller ones break, but on this one, no, no, I haven't, we haven't had any break. They do have a smaller one where it's like just Torx bit or just security bits. And yes, that, that one breaks. We've had those break a few times. Yeah. So, uh, for the audio listeners, Mm -hmm. uh, we are in my living room right now slash studio. It's very nice. It's in Nashville and it's awesome because Mason and I have never done a lot like an in-person podcast. That's true. And why are you in Nashville? So I'm in Nashville for a uh, security conference and um, just here enjoying the the 40 under 40. And then the, I think it was like security now, next, network. Se- security next. Yeah. Security next, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but hey, congratulations Thanks, on your man. 40 under 40. Yeah. I'm 39 and I got like <laughs> six months left to win that award. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I don't think, I don't think you're good. Like no, <laughs> what well, is it? Forty? I guess you had to be under forty. Yeah, so thirty-nine would be the cut. I was thinking maybe you could like squeeze it in there at forty, but yeah, yeah, it's under forty. It's so. not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, we use those. Um, <clears throat> the we use pa- packouts quite a bit. Um, we have a dolly that that we roll them on. Um, there's Milwaukee makes like a sixteen-inch <clears throat> tool bucket um, that's rectangular and it has a packout clip on the bottom of it oh, okay oh we're we, still talking about tools i thought we'd yeah. moved on but yeah we use we're that still going we use that as well um and then we we use pack out for mostly stuff in the van we don't store any tools in the pack out um it's mainly just hardware yeah all the tools we have in rack drawers in our van so yeah i've seen your van you didn't you've done a great job with your Thanks. van you should post more pictures of it yeah i should I'll, i want to see the, the kind of like the final like the in production product because i saw you building a lot of the stuff yeah because you originally did like the drawers that was all custom made. You mm-hmm. got a wood, and then I think you converted it to like a more of a pack out modular kind of style. So it was all wood drawers. Yeah. And then the thing that we found was the drawers would get out of square uh, pretty quickly. So what we ended up going with was just making rack rails. So the, it's just rack rails, and we, we put in rack drawers. So we buy. Uh, 2U, 3U, 4U, and 6U rack drawers, and we just rack them in. And so what's really nice about that is if you have a drawer that gets screwed up or messed up, you can easily have one in stock, and it's really not a special order item mm-hmm. because you can get them from Mid-Atlantic, you can get them from Snap AV, you can get them from NavPoint. Uh, so we get all of ours from Snap AV. They were, be- because we could get a discount on top of our normal you know, dealer pricing, uh, I came out to like 35 bucks a drawer. So it was stupid cheap, yeah. and it, they work they work excellent. Um, they're not like a Middle Atlantic or a Penn Elcom drawer, but for putting tools in, they're perfect. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. What, uh, what else on the tool side is uh, is big for like so, essentials? Uh, so essentials, I mean, you need a network tester. Um, we use Fluke for everything. So we used to yeah. have... Um, we used to have like a cable IQ that that broke. We tried Klein. Klein has a couple different models, and we've tried all those models. Does Klein have a qualifier? I know they make like the four pair tester, but they don't have like a certifier. They don't have really. a certifier. I think they have a qualifier because yeah. we got one, but we kept getting weird issues where it would say a pair is shorted or there's a problem, and there wasn't. We would put our fluke on there, and it mm-hmm. wouldn't show any problems. So hmm. we started to really run into issues where we didn't trust the results, which is then it kind of negates the point of the tester so we ended up going to um the new i think it's called link iq for yeah, uh awesome. for our testers so those are like 2500 bucks and then you get gold support with them so we got two of those and for five grand for two testers i mean you think it's a lot but like when you're working in this stuff it's you kind of get used to that price point so yeah yeah, yeah i got you that's awesome so uh are we done with tools because i want to move on to yeah, some sure. more like in in depth kind of bit yeah and you interchange between bit and bit inks, yeah right? whatever kind of flows in the moment in the moment yeah, yeah it's all contextual yeah, yeah. I gotcha so so bit that's your company your integration company is mm-hmm. is kind of like what the overarching name would be yeah or, oh yeah okay so systems integrator systems integrator 
And what have you been installing recently uh, that's exciting you and that's worked well? You know, Control 4 is something that we've started installing more and more of, and that's that's been really exciting. Ava um, Aware is a system we started installing recently. Uh, we completed a fairly large install of it. It's about 200 cameras. Oh, and that, then, that's <clears> actually pretty big. Yeah, yeah. and then we, um, we, we've done more smaller installs with it. We've been really happy with it. It just... The system just works. If you haven't heard of Ava Aware, you just Google Ava Aware. They got bought out by Mo- Motorola a few, maybe like a month ago. It was pretty recent. Yeah. yeah. So Motorola, Vigilant, all, all under one umbrella now. And, you know, at first I was kind of against it, but I think in the long term, they've had issues where the camera, the camera's a good quality, but there's not a lot of adjustments with it. <clears throat> yeah. And so I think this is really going to help them. Uh, kind of push them in the right direction. Their software is really good, and their um, their hardware is really good. They've just needed some tweaks on the software and a little bit of tweaks on the hardware. Um, and I think that having Motorola involved is going to help with that yeah. quite a bit. Wait, do they OEM from somebody? Or like no, they-, they build it all themselves. The only one they OEM for is the multi imager, and that's okay. that's made by Vi- uh, Viviotech. Um, but the um, the dome and the bullet are all made by them and you can tell it's made by them because it's not like the, especially the bullet it it the bullet is like a shotgun like you okay. you take two screws out of the back then the whole thing slides forward and then you can plug it and then you you like cock it back and screw it in it's like it's so weird but it's cool it, it's like nothing you've seen before no, nobody else no makes one it. no okay. one would do it like that no is there any particular reason for that i don't design or i don't know I, I don't know. Uh, it's a cool design. Yeah. And so what's cool is they put in a regular three quarter NPT um, liquid tight like cable gland on the inside. Okay. So if that were to break down, it's standard. You can go get one of those anywhere. And okay. So that that is really nice. Um, but yeah, most companies put that in the base. They put the RJ forty five in the base for the bullet. Um, like Axis does that. Hanwa does that. Mm-hmm. Ava decided to put it in the middle of the camera. Okay, go so, go Ava. I was like, all right, whatever, as long as it works. Yeah, how does it stack up against um, a Vigil Axis, a Vigilon, Hanwha? Yeah, yeah, so like WiseNet Wave is is really good. It's made by Next Witness. Um, so the same thing as like Digital Watchdog. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't have a lot of experience with the Vigilon per se, but we did when we did the support the 200 camera deployment. The person that is overseeing that deployment um, spent probably 10 years on a Vigilon, and he likes it more than a Vigilon just because it's easier for him to use. Now, I'm 100% confident a Vigilon is way more feature-rich than Ava is, but from a usability standpoint and what a person, security staff, needs, um, it, it's offering all those and uh, all those needs and it, it gets you the information that you need quickly, and it's accurate, which is the big thing because Hanwha and Axis have analytics, but mm-hmm. I've noticed with Hanwha especially that those analytics may only be 90% accurate, 85% accurate, and that's really not good enough because when they're 10% not accurate, it's usually like rain or an object that is in no way, shape, or form what you're looking for. Right. So then you start to not trust the analytic, which breaks down the whole model. Exactly, yeah. So uh, Ava is very accurate. And if they if they have a uh, an analytic that's not accurate where you get an alert, you can send it in, and they will go through the model and figure out why it recognized that. Okay, cool. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, integration wise, who do they integrate with? Like on the Axis control side, like what? Um, so Open Path and Phoenix are the only two that I know. Of only right two now. that you know of. Yep. And I, I know you do a lot of Phoenix, um, mm-hmm. but are you doing any Open Path or anything like that? No, or? I've looked at it, and haven't gone down that path yet. I'm yeah, sure. I'm, path, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'll go down at some point. Yeah. Yeah. But why would you go? Um, from Open Path to Phoenix, any reason? Because I know that's like what you lead with. Oh, from to Phoenix to Open Path. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, the thing is, maybe if I know they have like a better door intercom, um, like they have that whole integration. Yeah. They have their own um, with a reader built in. The problem is, is in my mind, access control is so like you. You may want to carry three different camera systems or four different camera systems that you carry to, to install. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even if you look at IPVM, they show that most companies carry one, maybe two flavors of access control because if you carry Mercury, you may only OEM Phoenix or you may only OEM Linnell or what have you. You're not going to say, okay, I'm going to carry Phoenix and open path 
and Paxton and Brevo because now you're juggling a lot of different things for your installers. Mm -hmm. um, usually it's, I'm going to stick with this one brand and this one brand's going to do it all. Some will do like, I'm going to do open options in PDK, but they'll lead with PDK because that's mm -hmm. easy and that's what right. they know. And open options is just for like that one or two enterprise customers that they get that, where they need an on-prem large scale solution. Yeah. We lead with Phoenix because we can come in at a very basic price point and we can satisfy the needs of most of those lower end customers. And then we can go all the way up to full enterprise and we don't mm -hmm. have to switch our product stack or do anything different. I don't have to do anything different on the training. Phoenix is already fairly complex. So I can keep, I can keep that all in one roof and it's, and it's rock solid reliable. So I can put it in, forget about it. Same thing with Ava. I can put it in and just forget about it and it's going right. to work. Yeah. With, with Phoenix, it's cloud only, correct? You technically can do on-prem, but okay. the cost of it is so high that it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and they use like AWS infrastructure, yep. and it's like very scalable. Yes. But didn't they get bought out recently by somebody? Or? Yeah, they got bought out by Acre, and uh, oh, okay. so far what I've seen is Acre. So Phoenix, from my standpoint, has generally been kind of a, a cheaper company to where like, okay, if we can outsource – if we can do this internally or outsource it to India – that's what we'll do. And I think Acre is bringing in like, no, we need to get this done like now, not in like eight months from now. I got you. So okay. things are moving That's quicker, good. which is great, which yeah. is great. So they're having more money uh, flow in and, and it's – it's working better. Yeah. I, I think that's that's going to be a good acquisition, unlike the OpenEyeAlarm.com acquisition. Which, what the hell happened with that? Like, I haven't man. heard anything about them. It's just like they kind of fell off the radar. Yeah. I, the one thing is – I stopped <clears throat> kind of preaching that in the LVN. <laughs> you know, I used to be very like, oh, open eye is, is great. Yeah. And what I've noticed is they've had a lot of promises that have been broken. Like we were supposed to get multi-imager support three years ago, and we still don't have multi-imager support. They, they just posted on their bulletin that multi-imager is coming soon. They've been saying that for three years. So the yeah. fact that a company is owned by a multi-billion dollar conglomerate and they still don't have multi-imager support, they still don't have great integration with alarm.com. Like they have technically, they check that box. But if you put in an alarm.com panel and you put in open eye, the, you go to click on that, like watch video event box and it pulls you into the open eye client. Like you have to go to a whole separate application. You can't just watch a, qu a quick little clip right there. And even Phoenix, you click on it, it just opens up in the Phoenix client. Yeah. So hmm. I don't know. I haven't been thrilled with open eye. I feel like they chase after, they don't understand that their UI is pretty garbage and they don't understand that they're, or they don't admit that their UI is pretty bad in compar comparison to like WiseNet Wave or, you know, anything from NX Witness or even, uh, is it Cumulex that I looked at today? Yeah, Cumulex, uh, yeah. Yeah, Cumulex is basically a better copy of OpenEye from what I can tell. And their system looks way better and easier to understand. Ava is, is miles easier to understand. Yeah. You know, the fact that... OpenEye mixes a thick and thin client, but you can't do everything you can do in the thick client that you can do in the thin client and vice versa. It's very confusing for the end user unless right. they like go through the training. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shame because alarm.com is a juggernaut. Yeah. And I think it was right before like the pandemic or whatever. So maybe that's their excuse. that something happened. Who knows? Man, but, yeah, well, OpenEye, from what I can understand, they've kind of already always operated like this. And I think that this is, a systemic issue with OpenEye because I think what from what I understand alarm.com has purchased them and then just kind of like here's money and you can use this money to to do what you want to do with it <laughs> what are they doing and, and that's yeah. the thing is like what are they doing with that yeah. capital I don't know and the the excuse that I always get is well we bring new people and we have to train them and do all these things okay so then like you look at a company like Ava or they're two years in and they're like whooping your ass. They're well, doing good work. Yeah. Like, but with Ava, they, they have, they had crazy salaries for these people. So yeah. at the same, I feel like though open or, or, uh, open eye right. could do something very similar yeah. to that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So back to Phoenix. Um, so you've installed quite a bit since we last, last talked. Yeah. 
but you ran into some issues, I guess, like with everybody with like supply chain stuff. Mm-hmm. Like what's been going on? That's a huge topic. I mean, so we, but, we, we've had issues all the way from like Control 4 getting processors for Control 4 projects, like your audio processors to everyone's having issues getting mercury panels. And so the one way we've resolved that is just not installing access control and just shifting our business towards doing things that aren't access control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or well, that's not one way to solve it. Or not control for, you know, yeah. or we'll kind of push people. So if you go, okay, I'm kind of on the edge of doing it. it whenever you make this decision, it's going to be six months out to get any equipment. So yeah. if you want an access control system, get it now. Um, we also have been trying to, buy more equipment up in and then getting that equipment within a couple months versus waiting for someone to make the decision we'll just start buying the equipment before they make it yeah and hoping that they make it but if they don't i'm sure we'll sell it to someone else wait so what line of business are you focusing on just the structured cabling side or like what structured cabling cameras is something that we can get so structured cabling and cameras uh, we're actually getting in a lot of our home automation stuff now so we're kind of going through that backlog okay finishing those projects so yeah yeah yeah, so in terms of like billing, do you build a customer just like, hey, like we can't do this for, for nine months, but we're still going to bill you? Like no. How, so how, we, how have we, you done? We do a deposit. So they yeah. usually will pay 50 to 70% down okay. depending on this, the scale and, and the margin in the product, project. Yeah. And then from there, once we finish it, then then they'll pay for the rest of it. Yeah. What are you hearing? Maybe you don't have this information, but what are you hearing on like when this will get resolved? I mean, like you said, the automation stuff is coming in now, but I feel like there's more I don't supply th- chain issues that are hitting with like. Shit. I don't think we're lockdown g- or whatever you know. It's just I don't think we're gonna see any this let up for another two to three years. Oh, okay. Well, that's not reassuring, Mason. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't think I don't think any of this is gonna change. I think what's yeah. gonna happen is people are gonna start bulking up on what they stock instead of doing yeah. it like just in time. It's bulking season, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna have to kind of deal with the the ebbs and flows like ubiquity. We install a lot of ubiquity cameras for residential. We like the product, but you can't get it. So when it yeah. comes out, we buy 12 cameras at a time, and we just yeah. kind of sit on them. And then when someone goes, hey, I want a camera system, we go, we just offer this one camera. Yeah. It's like, if you want to do it or not with the ubiquity product, then that's what we got, and that's yeah. what we can do. So. Any other business continuity um, plans? Like switching into something <laughs> completely different? No. Or no. That's not on the table. I think we're just, we yeah. spread a wide enough net to yeah. where if one thing starts to slow down, we try to pick up another. Yeah. But like what I'm trying to do right now is is get access control proposals signed off on so that way we can, when those when that equipment does come in, it, it should flow nicely because we'll ha- we'll get done with our backlogs on our access control and then we'll flow, I mean, in, in control four and home automation and then we'll flow in to access control at least yeah. that's the hope right yeah yeah, yeah. I, I wish john was here to talk about the access control side because i know that he he was he was telling me like the mercury and hid is all on like back order or whatever now he's saying that that hid is saying like the word on the streets they'll have everything by summer by summer yeah i don't know yeah but but he i think there's other opportunities for other companies to come in that manufacture similar hardware but if you're a mercury, if you're if you're a mercury, that, that's it. Yeah, and the There's issue, no, yeah. the mercury. One thing mercury is looking at doing is is looking to go to a different chipset and then programming around that chipset. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's gonna work. Well, that's some interesting stuff, man. Well, yeah. thank thank you for sharing the insight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when when are we gonna do another another podcast? Is this like a one time thing? I think like, well, we gotta pick it back up eventually. You, do you want to? I'm yeah. kind of putting you on the spot right now. Yeah. I'm trying to be like, hey, let's yeah, because we just had dinner. I yeah. had dinner on Broadway. That was nice. That was that was great. And uh, we were talking about the podcast and how it imp- how important it is mm-hmm. to connecting with the community and bringing in new people and new yeah. ideas. So yeah. So we'll do it maybe once a month. Once a month. Or twice, I, I, I twice think we a could month. do once or twice a month, yeah. Let's do twice a we month. We were doing it like twice a month for a while there. I think we had like a four-episode run, and then we kind of dropped off. I feel like we went to like six or seven. We Maybe. But yeah. we were looking at the Facebook group mm-hmm. and teasing apart some of like the really good questions. Yeah. And the Facebook group probably has gained maybe 10,000 people since mm. – our last podcast. Yeah. It's like the juggernaut of mm-hmm. it's the biggest low voltage group on the internet. Yeah. So um within it, people are answering the question already, but it's nice to kind of scroll through it and talk about some of yeah, stuff. Yeah, give some of our, our feedbacks and thoughts on it. So that way if you post in it, you might see your post come up in the podcast. 
That's right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, it's pretty pe- cool. Pe- people love that. Was yeah. Like, oh, shit. Oh, You're shit. Like, that's me. That's me on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So. All right. So we're, we're going to walk back to the hotel. Yeah, uh, well, we gotta, I, I am. Yeah. Well, I'll walk you back. Oh, we'll, take so. some, we'll take some more pictures. All right. See some more of the city. Uh, yeah. na- if you're in Nashville, if you're listening or watching or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, come hang out. I'm the official tour guide. I'll take you down Broadway. I'll take you out to Jason Aldean's. Yep. Um, and, uh, J- Justin Timberlake, his place. We didn't go there. We were right next door to it. Well, yeah, we were next Maybe door. next time. Yeah. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, thanks for, guys and gals, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. Thank See you, guys. guys. Yeah, bye.